Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rapid. <laughs> I guess we'll start off with hi, David, because that's kind of how we do it. Everyone say hi, David. Hi, David. <laughs> <laughs> so it's now printed solid, a Prusa Research, Division of Prusa Research by Prusa. The yeah. best way to put it is that it's printed solid. Okay. And then if you're the tax man who's owned by Prusa Research. Oh, okay. So if I'm, I, so I can still buy Jesse Filament, your 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 enclosures every nothing is changing for me going to your website right, right. other than a part of Prusa research we, uh, we're not dropping any brands Some okay. brands might drop us but we're not dropping any brands okay uh we're also not going to drop any of our focus either so nice. that's a big thing um that was important during the whole negotiating period yep to make sure we got that all that right so jesse filament Will still be Jesse. Are you going to manufacture Prusa Mint or are you going to stay with Jesse? There is some internal debates. Prusa has a lot going on right now. Okay. Um, they're, they're going to be spending a lot of money over the next year or so. And one of the things that's being evaluated is how much Prusa Mint am I going to make here? Okay. Because we spoke about this earlier. The same resin, the same base resin for both plastics, but the machinery is different, right? The machinery is different and their level of QC is different. Okay. They're using higher end uh, lasers for their QC. Mine's doing sampling about every 30 centimeters. Theirs is getting down to like about every centimeter. Okay. So it's definitely overkill, um, but that is the level of QC that uh, Prusa has. Okay, so that's cool. So now what opportunities are now open now that you are part of Prusa? So. You're a direct vendor now, right? I'm a direct vendor. So that opens up all the educational, commercial, business, all those opportunities now, right? Is that right. correct? So for example, um, let's say you as a straight consumer want to buy a three, uh, Prusa. Okay. You should still go to Prusa and buy it. Okay. Uh, don't, don't, don't mess with me, just go to Prusa and buy it. But if you're a school or a business or a government agency, they have to buy from an American entity that they can go through the whole purchasing process they can make sure that all the legalities and tariffs and taxes are paid. And uh, I get the joy of doing all of that paperwork. <laughs> um, so that's who be buying the Prusas from me. Now the consumer people that want Prusa stuff, uh, they'll come to me if they want the Prusa spare parts. They can buy spare okay. parts from me. They can buy Prusa mint from me. Uh, support, so if I if I my Prusa breaks and I live in the US, will I if I call support, am I getting you or I'm still getting Prusa back? Well, you're still going to get Prusa back there. Okay. However, let's say that Prusa decides you need to get it repaired. Then you're, they're going to throw the ticket over to me. Okay. Um, so and, there's no longer an ocean away there for shipping. Right. So well, they sit there and say, don't send it back to the Czech Republic. It's been $250 on shipping. Uh, send it over to Printed Solid and they are an authorized service center. They'll do the warranty repair and ship it back to you. Awesome. Uh, which will save a lot of that out. The other thing it allows is that, let's say uh, you're out of warranty, but you still want it fixed. You're a school or business or yep. even if you just don't want to mess with your flooded hot end. You're going to have a Prusa service center to send it to. Awesome. And the best way I like to put it is that, you know, I have all these texts and, you know, they're 3D printing geniuses and brilliant people, but uh, we've had the Prusa text come over. So we've been trained in the Prusa way, as I like to call it. Uh. <laughs> their, their techniques, their speak, so that you should get a unified message when it deals to Prusa support and warranties okay. between Print and Solid and them. Um, we will eventually, unfortunately we're dealing with GDPR, uh, we will eventually have full access to their ticketing system to help and look up your problems in the past and connect it all together and uh, combine records and give uh, better solutions to your problems. It's good to hear. It's going to be pretty neat. So this is going to be something that's definitely going to be awesome in the future. Like this, is gonna, this is shaping up to be pretty good for the consumer and for both companies involved. Oh yes, uh, I mean, for the business uh, for the business side of things, you're gonna see that finally Prusa is gonna be able to make a play into business, enterprise, corporate, without having to change their core values. That, that's my problem. Uh, then what they're gonna do is, uh, the consumers, uh, biggest complaints you ever see on any of the forums has been, uh, it takes, you know, either it's too long or there's, you know, shipping problems or imports or something's an issue. We can eliminate all of that from that whole workflow. That's awesome. And as time progresses, I expect more and more uh, um, 
faster production, faster shipping, faster everything as we become more integrated with Perusa. So slowly my shirt will turn from red to orange. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, I'm excited and I'm really glad that uh, it's not going to hurt printed solid in what we do. Yeah, from everyone I've talked to so far, everyone seems pretty enthused about this and should lead to some good things. Oh, I'm, I'm going to love it. Um, I'm going to love it because I can still play with the Boron guys. Yeah, because uh, now, technically, if I'm not mistaken, Prusa is now one of or possibly the largest Voron kit distributors because you sell Voron kits and Prusa owns... Through a proxy, that is technically <laughs> correct. Uh, <laughs> Printed Solid is, is that. So we can say... Printed Solid is one of the largest Voron kit distributors out there, and Printed Solid is owned by Perusa. Sorry, I have okay. to have all this. I have lawyers <laughs> behind me giving me all let the me, Let me pull out the, the, the flow chart so we can map this. So, but it, it was structured in such a way, and the contract negotiations were done in such a way that Joe can come over here and say, David, I don't want you to carry Voron, and I can still sit there and say, no, I'm still carrying no. Voron. That is nice. You get to keep your independence. And we're very independent. Yeah. Um, Pretty much, unless I'm going to spend, you know, $5 million, I don't have to ask for permission for anything. <laughs> so, I get to have that, but the great yep. thing is, me and Joe, we've known each other for so long. Yeah, everyone knows everyone in this business, pretty much. Well, me and him, you know, secretly in the background, we we have a lot of the same mentality. We have the same passions for open source. We have a similar work ethic, but our workflows are a little bit different. So. We get to use both of them. I love that they sent all the uh, they sent all their engineers and their salespeople over here, and they weren't uh, sent over here to train us in their ways. They spent a whole week learning how I do things, and they kind of went back to Bruce. They're like, we should learn from that. It's kind of neat. So it really makes it fun. Good to hear. So can't wait to see what comes out of this. It'll oh, be I'm awesome. It. Cheers. Cheers. Hello. How's it going? You guys do your own machines too, or? Yeah, snow oh. machine. The new from the filament. I've yeah, heard of the filament. Started. Um, um, then we uh, had so many exotic fun filaments that we couldn't print, or we were having to have three different printers be able to print all of them. So we decided to build our own. Okay. Could support a whole workflow. Okay. It's nice. nice. It's been a trade show. <laughs> one more day. So this one is the Gearbox? Gearbox HG2. It's okay. a Gearbox brand name, HG2. Okay. Designation. And you have four, five hundred? Four hundred? Five hundred? Uh, volume? 557 by 813. Okay, so it's... Yeah, Everybody else looks standard because we're in America, so 18 by 18 by 32. Yeah. How many King's th Thumbs is it? <laughs> Uh, and what's that printed in CF something? This is printed in uh, uh, yeah, carbon fill ABS. Okay. Uh, and 90 in the chamber. Ooh. 90 in the chamber. Yeah, this one doesn't radiate the heat, so. Oh, you got oh you got two. I think all right. If we get a second, I can show you over the other one that you can open okay. up and go around in. But uh, yeah, uh, up to 230C in the chamber. Oh, yeah, so your peak, Altum, all the fancy yeah. exotics and whatnot. Okay. Those in the semi crystal state, so that's fun as well. Okay. That's why I had to ramp it up so high, but yeah. Oh wow, it's really, yeah, you got. Yeah, 90 is like kind mean, of our, our, our low end, it's very bottom out. Okay. It's hard to do, it's honestly hard to do much lower than that. It's because of the, how insulated it is, how or? insulated it is, the heaters run it sort of thing. I mean, you okay. just turn them off, but then you're getting nothing, so. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So yeah, we struggled with. At G -G -A, but ABS. Yeah, well, that's not really your market. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> go so, buy a Prusa. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I've heard about the filaments. Yes. But I, I don't think I've ever actually printed with them, but I've heard of them. So. Do you have a Canadian reseller? Okay. I, sh I might have a school. I gotta check. Cool. What are you printed on? Uh, Vorons. Vorons, okay. Yeah. What is the, uh, what's heating the bed? Nothing. It's a heated by the chamber. Okay, so there is no bed heater at all, just strictly chamber heat. Okay. Yeah, um, but it's a stainless steel bed, so it will absorb heat, so just okay. give it time to heat soak and, and yep. have a heated bed. And what is the material on the bed? So we have like, two different plastic build sheets to just okay. the vacuum down. Um, okay. Oh, so that's a vacuum line there. 
Was that yeah. okay? That okay. That makes sense now. That makes sense now. Yeah. Okay. You can hold the bullshit in place, and bring the top of the other and some people that way. Okay. Damage your okay. muscles. Okay, so the, the sheet is like a one and done type thing. So you finish the printing, or you, uses out of that. you do get a couple uses. Okay, but it is a consumable. It's consumable, okay. so it kind of depends on. Uh, oh yeah, we're just saying the other one because. Kind of depends on like what you're printing with it and okay. the, you know, how use of your beans. Will. Holy, jeez. And that's why you, it's funny you walk by some of the other heated machines you can put your hand in front and you can feel the heat reading yeah. and, and this one you can't and this explains why yeah dual plane um we have like a film on the back of this one as well just to keep the heat away and, okay um, even with that we do warn you once you get the 230c oh it's yeah there'll, there'll still be some heat in there and that's uh, so peak some, or ultim or this is 1010 10, 10. okay and the summer it sucks, but in the winter you get keep the printer a hug, warm yourself back up. <laughs> Ooh. And what is it? Just some demo print or this? Yeah. Sorry, what was that? What is it? Is it just the demo print oh, or it's demo print? So, yeah, okay. Like a, a layup mold. For okay. Like the fiber or something like that. Cool. But yeah, this is designed in house to look like something our customers might print. Yeah, this is the yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Okay. And for the hot ends and everything, it's all custom and whatnot, or is it a is it an off the shelf hot end in no, there? It's a custom. We build it all, um, design all, and so then these are our nozzles as well. Okay. Okay. So you got this big flat because I'm looking at the tool head, and then you got this big flat cone there, so that just prevent build up and yeah. you, you're not coming into shop in the morning and you got the giant cloud of death on your tool head. Yep, yep. Really expensive one. <laughs> and then yeah, the whole mouse is replaceable and that's a whole, it covers a whole heat zone. So okay. if you, uh, I mean, especially when you're in the peak and stuff, like if you let heat cool off too much, it'll, um, it bonds to the metal. Okay. So. Replacement okay. Change, you uh, can go a little higher even, actually. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Where do you use Thank such you. big? Jason, working hard. Good. Good to see you again. So already finished the most of the booths. Hmm. You already checked the most of the booths. Yeah. I today I started on that side. I'm working this yeah. way. Yeah. So. Because I got you on camera right now. Yeah. You cool. need to explain to me. This is super critical. Uh -huh. What does LDO stand for? LDO, so we, we are a manufacturer from a step motor manufacturer yeah. and we try to make reliable step motor for different uh, uh, industries like 3D printer, medical, even some like home appliance and ways we uh, contact more and more 3D print companies, they need us to make more production. Yeah, because like, now you've moved into kits. Yeah, yeah, so. and then with working with the Boron community, something like Boron, Jubi, NX, every, every open source community, they work with LDO motors. So the kit comes with customer's requirement. It's like kind of yeah. customer drive. You know, we frankly, we, we, we try to help the community make the good quality product. It's like uh, follow all the basic design, do some polish, do some improvement. So we we try to provide a perfect kit, perfect production for the 3D print community. So yeah. we provide good good service and the reasonable price and the reasonable lead time also with reliable quality. Yeah, from the yeah. few kits I've built so yeah. far, you guys have been yeah. doing very well. Now, yeah. more importantly, what does the actual LDO and LDO motors stand for? Oh, okay, so <laughs> LDO is come off a uh, Chinese name. Chinese name from LDO is Landa O. It's kind of a uh, spell. First, first capital letter of Chinese name. Okay, so the yeah, Chinese LDO. name is... What is the Chinese name? Lando O. Lando O? Yeah. Land Lando O Motors yeah. or yeah, whatever. So Chi LDO. Chi Lando okay, that makes sense. So, yeah. <laughs> Been it's wondering that for a while now. What does yeah. the LDO and LDO? So yeah. it's the first letter of the Chinese yeah, name that can be converted to English. Name. Okay, so that I, makes sense. I think it's kind of tricky, but you know, as soon as they have questions, they're easy to make them to remember <laughs> LDO. <laughs> yeah, it's a trick. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.